Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Selma kit for Moto. This is the newest kit from Steve Hill. It's had a bunch of really good ones lately. This is actually my favorite because it uh, empowers all of the Moto mesh operations um, with a bunch of new selection operations. And if you're modeling with mesh operations or mops, uh, doing procedural modeling, you're really limited by how good your selection operations are. And what this kit does is it takes some of the selection assemblies, which I'll talk about in a second, and converts them into full C++ plugins. And there's also a bunch of new ones as well. They're just awesome. And the ones he converted, he also improved. So let's... Um, I'll put this link in the description here where you could buy them from his Gumroad page. It's only five bucks. It's an absolute must buy for any Moto user. If you want to do any uh, mesh operations at all, these are like a huge amount of uh, benefit for five dollars. It's crazy. Also, if you just want to support the Moto community, I suggest you you buy these even if you only use mesh operations every once in a while. Um, like I said, I'll put the link in the description below. Like all of his kits, they come with uh, great documentation. So I've got a PDF file that comes with it. It goes through every single one of these. He also includes a sample scene for every single one of these uh, mesh operations, uh, or I'm sorry, selection operations. There's like 19 sample scenes. So you know, it's really easy to figure out what they do. And in this video, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of go through them really quickly so you can get a taste of what they do. Uh, so yeah, let me just flip over to Modo here. And again, like I mentioned, there are some, uh, let me just pause my mesh operations stack and hit add selection. So a selection operation, if you're not familiar, um, just tells the mesh operation a bevel or a delete or an extrude what points or edges or polygons to work with. And that could be based on a set of rules. It could be based on the direction of the normal or the number of vertices in the polygon. And it comes with, you know, Moto comes with quite a few of them. And you can see sort of some of Steve's in here, these nice icons. Um, it also comes with the selection assemblies. Moto comes with the selection assemblies. Now these are just uh, uh, assemblies is like a node um, network that's been collapsed into like one item uh, called an assembly. And these will take some of the selection operations that come with Moto and they'll mix in some like logic nodes and some user channels. And you could do things like, you know, select curve polygons or select edges by angle. And what Steve did is he took some of these and he improved them and he created full C++ plugins out of them. So they operate a little bit faster. They don't have some of the weird little errors that the Moto ones have. Um, they're going to duplicate better, stuff like that. So let me get back to the existing ones. So this is, again, his, um, uh, I use these great icons. They blend right in with Warren's icon kit, which, you know, if you, if you don't have that, you should go out and buy it right now. There's a video on um, Pixel Fondue about it, but Warren's icons update all the icons in Moto. Uh, for for meshes and for items and, and mesh operations and there are these beautiful icons and Steve just his work really well with them so it's, it, they, they just look like they're all part of the same pack you can see Steve's in here to select ingons and select edges by axis we'll go through all of these um, select biplane that's my favorite icon it looks like a biplane um, uh, select by parts super powerful so let's just kind of look at these real quick and like I said, I've got this pause. So this one's just gonna select some triangles. So here you can see in my little test object, these first really easy ones, just selecting different polygon types. We've got some triangles here, we've got some M-guns here. Say I wanna merge these guys, I can just have my select by triangles uh, mesh operation and I can turn on my merge. Let me just um, unpause it or I can turn off my merge. You can see them right here and I can turn it back on and I can get rid of those, right? So let's say I want to bevel some uh, ingons. So I've got these ingons up here, right? You can count Alt-1 to convert that to vertices. You can see there's quite a few verts there. And I can turn on that bevel. So I'm beveling some ingons, right? And I can also bevel, you know, I could really decide like how many um, verts per ingon I want with the select polygons by vertex count. So let me just turn off the select ingons. Now it's going to bevel everything. And over here, I'll turn on my select by vertex count. And that's, if I just go up here, you can see that that's just getting that middle one here. And if I look at, you can see the ghost operation there with ghosting on. So you can see what it's going to be doing. And you can see that little green polygon there is what's being selected. And I can change my vert counts. I can go from like five to eight to get all those, or I could say four to eight to get everything but those, um, let me turn off our merge here, everything but those uh, tries down here, right? So you can very easily, um, you know, change these to whatever you want. You can also animate them or rig them. You know, again, super useful. And you can even do something like um, use a set material mesh up and then set that material to red and then just, you know, see where all the ingons are in your model by 
adjusting your vert number over there and see where all the all the you know five point polygons are or whatever those turn them red. Uh, so there's lots of uses for these. And of course, you can always just do quads if you want. You can just uh, select by quads here. So it's a nice little uh, single mesh object just to select all the quads and the polygons. So those are the real simple ones. So let's move on to something a little bit better here. Let's look at um, let's look at this one. So we've got a couple of things here. First of all, I've got this delete, and it's off right now. But I have a select polygons by type. So here I can select any of these types of polygons. Face, a curve, sub D's, Bezier curves, Catmull Clark, polyline, B spline, spline patch, text polygons, curve fill polygons. And here I'm just going to delete this curve polygon right here, right? So I'm just going to go to delete with the curve selected. It's deleted. Um, on this one, we've got a select by polygon area. So I'm going to just turn on the bevel. And you can see I'm beveling certain polygons based on their area. And I can adjust the area. I could say, like, this, if I just want the smaller ones. I could do that. I just want the bigger ones. Maybe not quite that big. Like that, right? So it's selecting polygons by area. Again, super useful. And again, because these are just channels, you can rig them up. Uh, you can animate them. You can do everything you can do with the channel, right? So there's a couple more. Let's look at some of the edge ones here. I've got an edge chamfer on here. So I'm just sort of, let me just turn off all my selection operations here. So right now, everything is being chamfered. All these edges are being chamfered, right? Like that. But let's say I just want to select by edge length. Let me just turn on this one. And now I'm only chamfering these short ones up here. Or I can um, just go with the big edges, like 0.3 to 1. And I'm just getting the big edges there. So you can just select edge by edge, edge length. Now, this existed as a selection assembly prior to this, I believe. But again, it's nice to have it in here just as a um, as a as a full on selection operation. And it's again, I think it's a little bit easier to use. And we can also select it just by angle. I'll just flip this one on here so I can bump. Um, let me just turn on my chamfer here. So I've got these edges up here. I can just you know expand this and, and you know go down the uh, go down the, the line here. Whoops. And get more edges by angle if I just want to chamfer those. I can also select by axis. So here I've got um, uh, edges on the y-axis. All of these guys being uh, uh, chamfered. I can change it to Z. So we just have it in Z. Or I can change it to X on the X, right? So these are some nice edge selection tools. Uh, there's also some really useful ones. And so when I get over here to these quad eye ones, let me just sort of turn some things off here. This is where I think it. it we get to the like super useful stuff. Um, so let's start off with select by part and turn on set weight. So what select by part does, it, a, a part, a lot of times when people think of part, they think of um, like a polygon. Uh, we have this set part command right here. It's kind of like a polygon selection set, but a parts in Moto, unfortunately, somebody gave them the same name, is a polygon island. So these are all different polygon islands, right? Connected polygons, polygon island. And each of these polygon islands has an internal index, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however many we have here. I guess we have 6, 0 through 5. And I can select uh, any one of these, right? And so any one of these that's selected will get that weight map. And so if we go over to, let's go to, uh, just select my weight map here. It should pop up. There it is. And so I can assign a weight map to any one of these guys in here. I can also go over to um, select by parts and get multiple parts. And this works just like uh, an, an array selection. So I can type in just you know, like one comma two and get two of these guys. Or I could type one through three and go like that. Or I could type zero through three comma four and get those. So you can imagine um, how useful this will be to set weights, uh, varying weights on different polygon islands or delete different polygon islands or just whatever you want to do with them. You can you know, select your polygon islands just with this nice little um, array selection here just by typing in their numbers in this list, either a range of them or through commas or some combination. Super useful, right? And so like weights, is gonna, weights are going to be set on those now. All right, so I'm going to turn on this polygon bevel. Right now it's beveling all the polygons. Some it comes with a number of mesh operations for random selection. So we've got the first one here, just select randomly. I'm going to turn that on. And you can see you've got a seed number, so I can you know type whatever I want in here. Whoops. I'm keeping, uh, 
So you can type in a seed number to get different um, different results. You can also up the chance and get 50% of them selected or 75, whatever. It's just a random selection, right? So it's a pretty easy way to do it if you just want a random selection. But sometimes you want a random selection with some rules. You want a random selection, but you only want to select a specific number of polygons or you don't want polygons that are right next to each other or you want polygons that are you know a certain distance from each other and we can do all of that stuff so select in randomly let me turn that one on it's so the same thing i have the seed so i can change the seed and i can say change the percentage of being selected but i can also like put in the number of polygons i want selected so i want like 100 selected or 50 selected but I want you know, the same sort of percentage on there and I have the seed value. So I can limit the number of polygons. I mean, I'm selecting randomly, which is also very useful, right? So I also have the select non-adjacent polygons. You'll notice this is randomly selected, but none of them are, are adjacent to any other one, right? There's always spaces around them. And again, I can go in here and just say, maybe I only want 100 of them selected, something like that. You should be able to change the seed as well. So, you know, Pretty cool, there's a little toggle for allowing shared vertices if you want, we'll see if that changes something here. Yeah, so we've got some diagonal ones. Those are shared vertices, turn that off and it won't get diagonal ones. So again, it's just another option for randomly selecting with some additional rules. Uh, select by normal, now this one's great. And I was um, sort of, let me just hit this zero to 90. So we've got all the guys here. Whoops, let me just turn this back to the way it was. So here I'm just selecting by normal, right? Let me just control click so we could get both these at the same time. Um, the selection assembly for this was a little bit weird in my opinion, it didn't work super well. But here let's say, you know, I can do zero to 90 on the normal. I'm getting everything from the top to, to the side. I can hit reverse if I want to get the bottom. I could do something in the middle like 75 to 115 like that. Oops, not 1000, but 115 like that. Pretty cool. So again, I'm just selecting by normal. It's super useful when you're doing um, procedural modeling to be able to do that. Isolate polygons by their normal angle. Also, you get a little more control. If I want to like pop open the schematic here, I can take my select by normal and drag it in here. Here I've got my polygon bevel and my select by normal. Let me just go ahead and get my select by distance above it. And so select by normal has a um, another channel here called rotation. So I can press L and add a locator to the scene. I'm just gonna drag it into the schematic here, zoom in a little bit, right click, and I'm going to add channel, world position, and I'm gonna hook that up to rotation right there. And so if I have my normal, my uh, locator selected, I can kind of drag it around like that. So you can imagine how this would be useful for something like motion graphics or something like that. Let me just sort of move it around. Pretty cool, huh? Just unhook that. I'll turn off select by normal and do select by distance. This is kind of the same thing. So we'll turn on select by distance. And I will, um, we have a minimum and a maximum. So let's just do minimum of 0.2, maximum of 0.5, something like that. And so you can see it uh, uh, getting all the guys here in the middle. If I if I bump up my numbers to like two, I'm gonna start getting the guys on the side. But the real power from select by distance comes again from using this locator. So I'm just gonna again drag the world position into the from channel here on select by distance. And then I'm also going to lower this from zero to like 0.2. And then I'm going to, oh, actually we'll actually do like one like that. And then I'm actually going to just uh, drag my locator around. Let me just sort of scooch this over. And here I'm dragging my locator around and it's using the distance from zero, what did we have, like zero to one meter away from anything within a one meter radius of that locator is going to select it. So it's gonna pick up that bevel, which is, which is pretty sweet, right? So you can imagine, again, using this for um, all kinds of animated effects, uh, motion graphics, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's not like a fall off, it's either on or off, but you can select by distance and yeah, it's, again, it's, just, it's just a super useful uh, mesh operation or selection operation that you can use with your mesh operations. So let's keep going. We've got a few more here. I've got, let's look at my toy car here. Let's say I want to delete half the model and then mirror it. Okay, so I want a mirror image, not, you know, this isn't quite a mirror, uh, symmetrical, right? Both tires pointing that way. So I can just go over here and say delete. 
and set this to polygon. And then I'm going to add the biplane, the one with the cool icon. So select biplane right there. Select that, and I'm just selecting the X. And here it is, it's deleting. You can see what it's going to be deleting. Select delete, you can see it deleted. It's got a little button here for selecting the positive or negative side. You can also include zero if you're like, you know, wanting to delete you know, vertices at zero or something like that. Uh, yeah, so I can just delete those and then you know add a mirror to mirror it back together and it'll be symmetrical, right? There we go. Now we got two antenna, so and the wheels are now you know symmetrical. So yeah, what else is there? There is oh vertical uh, vert edge count is another one. So here I've got a vert bevel on everything, so it's just um, beveling everything. But I can select by edge count. Well, let's say I want a minimum number of five edges and a maximum number of five edges. Enable that, and it's only going to get those guys. Let me just have that selected. You can see it's just going to select these polygons with one, two, three, four, five edges, and it's only going to bevel those guys. So again, super useful. And yeah, there is one other random one uh, by spacing. So on this one right here. Again, I'm just doing a polygon bevel and the select polygon by spacing. Again, it has a sort of, uh, you know, the random selection on there, but it has a minimum or maximum spacing. So let's say I get this down really low. It's just going to kind of grab everybody. Maybe I do 50%. It's going to sort of like grab every other one sort of randomly, right? I can change the seed, you know, whatever. That's fine. Um, but what's really cool is I can not just, you know, say I only want, you know, 16 of them selected, but I can adjust this minimum spacing to like 0.2 so it really spaces them out. I think we've got four different random selection mesh operations here. One just a plain old random select. There's random select in where you can pick the number of random selections. There's non-adjacent. Uh, there's by spacing. So, you know, lots of options in terms of random selection. And yeah, I think that about covers it. Like I said, it comes with 19 sample scenes. So every single mesh uh, selection operation in there has its own sample scene. Uh, it comes with good docs, great icons. And I just think it's a must have. I just, you know, I'm so happy with Steve that he's releasing all of these kits for Moto. They're super useful. Head over to his Gumroad, buy them all. Uh, I think they're fantastic. Yum, yum.